If you know me, I like to go for the best, I'm an all or nothing type of guy, and it turns out some of the best saw blades cost a lot of money, especially if you look at Forest, some of their blades can cost up to $175. Now I'm the type of guy who's completely comfortable spending over $650 on a vacuum, but for some strange reason, I have a problem spending $150 on a saw blade. I know it doesn't make sense. I'm confused too, just like you. After doing a little research on Al Gore's internet, I discovered some of my favorite creators on YouTube, like Kit Hands Dirty and Matt at 731 Woodworks and Jonathan Katz Moses use CMT blades. I figured if it works for Dirty Hands, a state trooper, and an Old Testament cat, it would be fine for a guy like me in my garage. CMT just released this new line of thin kerf blades that are aimed right at us who are in our garage. They're perfect for underpowered saws or saws that aren't hooked up to 220 and they go head to head with the devil that we've all bought at the big box store. So in this video I'm going to show you what's the same between these blades, what's different. I have all kinds of wood species that I've been doing tests on between all the blades and all the tooth counts to get what's the cut quality like and then I'm going to tell you the most important thing about these saw blades that I don't see a lot of people talking about and even on the marketing um, they kind of bury what I consider the most important feature. If I were you, I would not skip around this video because we're going to be giving away several saw blades thanks to Mike at Taylor Toolworks. Hey everybody, real quick, just want to let you know that I researched these saw blades on my own and I was going to buy them with my own money. I had them in my shopping cart and had an idea. I thought maybe I could get some at a discount or for free. So I emailed Mike and asked him, hey, I have this channel. Could you send me some for free so I could do a video on them? And I thought he would say no. He said absolutely and sent me some free blades about six months ago for me to try out and test with no stipulations that I had to say anything nice about them. To be fair, I reached out to Diablo. I asked them the same thing, gave them the same opportunity, and they said... That left me in a position where I went to the big box store and because they ignored me, I gave them my own money to buy fresh Diablo blades so that I could compare fresh Diablo against fresh CMT. So I got the CMTs for free, but I paid for the Diablos with myself just so I could compare this stuff. And I thought it's kind of cool that people give me free stuff every now and then to do things like this, but um, they're only doing that because of you. So I asked Mike if he would give one of you a free saw blade, and he said no he would give away two saw blades. So if you'd like to enter for a chance to win one of the two CMT saw blades that Mike is giving away exclusively to, to you, our channel, um, there's some info in the description below. Super easy to enter. How awesome is that? Let's get into it. So I took the initiative in creating the internet. First, let's talk about the price. These blades are priced right at each other. They're almost identical with one exception, and it's with the ripping blade. The CMT is a dollar cheaper, but you can get into these blades from anywhere from $30 to $50, and it's a pretty good value. Now, in the link below, I have a discount code where you can get 10% off the CMT blades if you want to. So if you use that blade, you're getting the CMT blades even cheaper than the Diablo blades. All right, the packaging. This really isn't a big deal, and it doesn't really affect the cut quality of the blade. But I hate this packaging. You have to cut it, and almost all the time, I end up cutting my hand, no matter how careful I am. I understand these are in the stores, they're stiff, I get it. But every time I get one of these, I just dread opening it because I know it's going to take me a while to get into the package. And no matter how careful I am, I'm going to cut myself. And I did on this. A surprising delight with the CMT packaging is they use snaps. You can open them easy and close them. And if you really didn't have a good place to store the blades, you could easily store them in this. Now you probably want a better place to store them. That really isn't a reason to buy one over the other. I just thought it was kind of fascinating that I always cut myself, because I'm apparently a dummy, on these packages. But with CMT, I didn't cut myself. Now CMT claims that their metal and their carbide tips are higher quality. There's more meat on the tooth on the CMT blades. They looked more substantial. I took my calipers to them and the carbide on the Diablos all came in at about 
two millimeters thick. With the CMT, they came in at 2.4, sometimes 2.5 millimeters thick. So for the same price or cheaper, if you use a discount code, you can get a little bit more meat on your tooth, on the carbide, with CMT. Both companies put a coating on the blade to help with sticking and rust, corrosion, all that stuff. I actually like the look of the Diablo as a graphic designer. It's really clean. I like the matte look, but I don't like the function. The thing I don't like about these blades is that the red often comes off on my work material. In fact, I was testing these blades, took one off, put a CMT blade, and the CMT got red on it. With the CMT, you don't get that. I've never been a fan of the function of the Diablo coating, even though I like the look of it. That doesn't matter if it comes off on your work material. Let me know if you've had that same problem. Both brands have stabilizing vents and sound dampening, but the ones for CMT look a little bit beefier and like there's more material in there and just visually seems like it would work better. I have no way of testing that. They both sounded about the same to me. They both vibrated about the same to me, but CMT's looks to be a little bit more substantial. Let's talk about cut quality because this is probably one of the most important outcomes of a saw blade. It doesn't matter how much you like the saw blade, it really doesn't matter how much you paid for it. If it can't cut, if it can't do its job, well, you got a problem. I got a hold of kind of regular grade plywood, some Baltic birch plywood, some mahogany, bloodwood, maple, cherry, oak, quarter sawn oak, walnut, and of course, the most expensive wood out there, a pine two by six from the big box store. And the surprising thing was the cut quality was fine between all of them. If you showed me all the results and you removed the labels, I would not be able to tell you which is which. The brand new Diablo blades, the brand new CNT blades all cut the same quality between rip cuts and cross cuts. I got no burning, especially on cherry and some of the softer woods, no burning, no tear out. They were really good. The thing that I don't know is how long that would last. I've used these blades for about five months, but over time, I'm not sure how the cut quality would degrade. I will say the general purpose blade for the CMT was really impressive. With a cross cut blade ripping walnut, I get burning. With the general purpose blade, I was surprised to get no burning when ripping walnut. Except on one piece that has some gnarly grain, I got burning and I was kind of bummed. I swapped out the general purpose blade for a proper tooth count, a 24 rip, and it handled the grain effortlessly, no burning whatsoever. So sometimes you can get away with ripping walnut with a general purpose blade, but really the 24 tooth did awesome. Now what I'm about to tell you is the most important part of this video. These blades are one and done. You use them when they're dull or when they break, you throw them away. These are disposable blades. There is no information on the blade. There is no information on the marking material. I have not been able to find any information online about the, the sharpening angle or how you would resharpen this. The reality is these blades are meant to be disposable. This is the most important thing that I think CMT is underselling on this line. These orange blades, which cost the same as the devil, or cheaper or resharpenable. My one note to, to improve on this is on the back, at the very end, they say, by the way, you can resharpen them. But if you look on the back of the blade, they've engraved the resharpening info. I think it's amazing that at this price point, a homeowner in his garage can get an industrial quality saw that you can send off to get resharpened and it costs the same or less than what you're used to getting at the big box store. To me, this is the greatest selling point of these CMT blades. They cut the same quality as Diablo. I can't prove it, but it felt like they cut easier. I didn't have to push as hard through the table saw, but that could be subjective. At the end of the day, I am really impressed. Now, if you're in a pinch and all you have is one of these, or you can't wait on shipping and you need a saw blade, these are fine. These cut fine. My only problem with these is that when they get dull, however much you use them, you're going to have to throw them away. And for the same price, you can get as good or better saw blade and when it gets dull or when it gets broken you can send it off and maybe pay 10 or 15 dollars to have it repaired and so these blades not only will cost you the same or cheaper up front but over time they'll save you a lot of money and i think they cut as good 
they certainly cut a little bit easier. Time out. If you like what I'm doing here or you're getting value on this video, do you know that you have the power to change this number? You can subscribe and not miss any future content from me. Why should you do that? Well, maybe you spotted this guy over here. You know what that is? Have you seen this? It is one of the coolest inventions I've seen on the internet. It is a budget rail square for track saws where you can use an existing speed square, get some 3D printed parts, and you've got a rail square. In an upcoming video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about this and compare it to one of the most expensive rail squares and tell you which one I think you might wanna buy. So don't miss it, you know what to do. I tested a ripping blade, general purpose blade, and a 60 tooth cross cut blade, and I really liked the results. If you could only afford one of these saw blades, which one should you get? The answer is kind of complicated, but there's really two ways you could answer that. The easy way you could answer that is you could say, if you could only get one, get a 40 tooth general purpose blade. That'll get you going. That'll mostly handle what you need to do. You could rip walnut with a general purpose blade like I have, depending on the grain. And you could also do some clean cross cuts. All the cross cuts I did with the general purpose blade were actually really, really clean. I was surprised. But there's a more complicated and nuanced way to answer that question if you can only afford one blade. It depends on how you cut. For me, I have a track saw and I do most of my cross cutting with my track saw, with plywood. 95% of the time when I use my table saw, I'm ripping things. So if I were only to buy one, I would not make the mistake of, of buying a 60 tooth cross cut blade when all I do is rip. In my case, if I could only afford one, I would buy the 24 tooth ripping blade because that's the majority of what I do. Maybe you're like that, but maybe you're different. Maybe all you do is cross cutting and all you do is plywood work. Then for you, you might want to go a higher tooth count and get a 40, 60, or even an 80 tooth if you can only afford one. If you could afford two, I would say forget the general purpose blade and go for your ripping blade, 24 tooth count, and go for a cross cut blade, probably a 60 tooth count. Now, if you could afford three, would I suggest you get a ripping general purpose and a fine finish? No, if you could afford three, here's what I would do. I'd get your 24 tooth ripping, I'd get a 60 tooth cross cut, and then I'd get the 80 tooth cross cut that I would reserve for like the premier projects where you need to do one final cut and you need to be perfect. That's what I would do. I know that can be confusing. I'll put all this in the description for you to digest. If you wanna give one of these CMT blades a shot, there's a link in the description below, take you right to Taylor Toolworks where you can get them. There's a discount code to save you some money. And don't forget, we're gonna be giving away two of them free to some of you. There's information down there. If you're like me and you're a noob and you've never thought about how to sharpen saw blades or that you could even sharpen them, that you could make an investment in a saw blade and when it gets dull, you don't have to throw it in the landfill, but you could actually get it resharpened for not a lot of money, then you should watch this video by Jonathan Katz Moses. It's basically a masterclass and it's the best video I've seen on the internet on the subject. Check it out.